Hello, my name's Chris from the Mad Butter channel. Welcome to another video. This is the second video in the series I'm doing about Lightroom Classic Masking. If you haven't seen the first, which I've just re-edited to correct an error, the link is in the description below. In this video, I will go over the different types of masks available in Lightroom Classic. There are in fact 11, but I won't be discussing the depth range mask as that requires the image file to have depth range information, which is typically only available in photos taken on certain mobile phones. The remaining 10 masks can be split into what I think of as three types. First, the manual masks, i.e. where you simply draw manually onto the image. So that will be the brush, the linear gradient and the radial gradient. Then there's the AI or auto masks with no direct input from the user. So subject, sky, background and people masks. Or I have to say here, I think subject and background are simply inversions of one another. And then the hybrid masks, which require some input, but the mask is then generated automatically based on that initial input. So that's the object mask the luminance range and the colour range masks. So now we'll take a quickish look at the three manual masks. These three all have keyboard shortcuts. K for the brush mask, M for the linear gradient and Shift M for the radial gradient. Now here's a useful tip for you. Here we are, as you can see, in the library module. And if you want to apply any of these masks, the standard way will be to go into the develop module by pressing the D key and then into masking using the shift plus W shortcut and then click on the relevant mask or the relevant keyboard shortcut for that mask. But in fact, whether you're in the library or the develop modules, you can simply use the mask shortcut, which takes you straight into develop and ready to create the mask of your choice. So, for example, here we are in the library module. If I press the K key, it takes us into the development module and creates a new mask, which is a brush mask in this case, and I can go ahead and apply it. This is obviously much quicker than using the standard approach. OK, so we have, some, have various options when using the brush mask. So I'll hit K to set up the brush mask. And you can see all the options in this panel here, although keyboard shortcuts are much quicker. So the first one is the left square bracket reduces the size. The right square bracket increases the size. Shift left square bracket reduces the feather. Shift right square bracket increases the feather. The numeric keypad changes the flow so three gives you 30 percent flow eight 80 percent and zero 100 percent you can of course draw free form if you hold down the shift key you constrain the stroke to either horizontal or vertical if you want a straight line not horizontal or vertical click once hold down the shift and click again and it'll draw a straight line between the two and when you're doing that you can also change the parameters of the brush between the clicks and Lightroom will interpret interpolate the change brush characteristics between the two points so for instance I'll click here and then we'll increase the size of the brush and the feather and reduce the flow and then we'll come and click here and you'll see it's changed from the characteristics at that point to the characteristics at the end point. There are two other important keyboard shortcuts. The first is Alt or Option. If you press the Alt or Option key you'll see that the plus in the center of the brush changes to a minus which means you can then erase anything you want from the mask. So that's a useful thing to know. The other important thing about the 
brush mask is this is the auto mask option here which you turn on and off by pressing the A key now with it off let's say I'm trying to mask this bird I'd probably use subject or object masks but this will serve the purpose if you try and go around the edge it's very difficult not to stray over into the sky so we'll undo that if you turn on the auto mask what that does is it detects boundaries contrast etc and as long as you keep the plus sign inside the boundary of the thing you want to mask it shouldn't spill over so if we go inside keep that inside the edge of the bird and you'll see now the masking follows the edge of the bird and doesn't spill over into the sky so auto mask is a very useful thing when you want to do some accurate masking if you're just doing a general area mask it's probably best to switch it off we'll now look at the radial gradients which as you recall we get to by the shortcut sh shift m so you can draw your radial gradient any shape you want circle ovoid narrow ovoid whatever and unlike the brush mask which once you release the mouse is fixed although you can do an add or subtract to that mask with the radial and linear gradients even though I've taken my finger off the mouse I can still come back and change the shape if you move the inner circle you change the feather you can rotate it move it resize whatever you want to do we'll delete that mask and shift M to get another radial gradient two more tricks with this if you hold the shift key the gradient is constrained to a perfect circle so I'll release the shift key so when you resize it you do it from the center if you hold down the alt key you'll see it resizes from the opposite side to which you're pulling like that one final thing about the radial gradient I'll press shift M again so now I've got the radial gradient instead of drawing if you hold the control key and double click it creates a radial gradient that just touches each of the four sides of the image obviously you can adjust the feather to taste but a useful trick is if you use the upper comma key to invert or click this invert button over here that's quite a good way of creating a custom vignette and obviously I can still go back in and change the feather I don't think there's a great deal more to be said about the radial grain of course you can also change the feather using this slider here so that's the radial gradient we'll now look at the linear gradient which you will recall is the shortcut M so when you draw you get three lines above the red dot is a hundred percent of any effect and between the three lines it feathers down to zero Obviously, you can move that to change the feather amount to whatever you want. You can move the whole gradient using the middle button, and that again changes the feather. You can rotate it in any direction you want. And normally, when you move these, you'll see it only feathers below this line here if you hold the alt key or the option key on the Mac you'll see it feathers or moves around the center line whereas without holding the alt or option key it only 
feathers in the direction you pull. Finally, if you hold the shift key when drawing the linear gradient, it constrains it to vertical or horizontal, like that. If you hold the Alt plus the apostrophe key, it reverses the direction of the gradient. But that is difficult to do on a UK keyboard at least. The two keys are rather far apart and it's simpler just to rotate the uh, gradient as you want. So that's all there is to say really about the linear gradient. In future videos we'll take these principles of these three manual gradients and show how they can be used to get better editing results from your images. In the meantime this video is getting rather long and so I'll defer similar delving into the features of the automatic and semi-automatic masks to the next video. In the meantime I hope you found this enjoyable and thanks for watching.